These are the top five off-roaders that you would have no idea were good in the dirt. Let's get right into it. Number five, the Volkswagen Touareg, or is it Touareg? This German SUV named after the nomadic tribe in Northern Africa is an amazing four-wheel drive vehicle. Now granted, it's not much to look at. It kind of looks like an egg. Maybe that's putting it generously. These things are awesome. Let's talk about what makes them so special. Now all the Volkswagen, we say Touaregs here in the US, had four-wheel drive, and it was a full-time four-wheel drive system. And they all had a lockable center differential, which means you could split the torque 50-50 front to back. But some of the Touaregs here in the US even had the option of a locking rear differential, and that is a game changer. These locking diffs take the Touareg and really elevate it into a class far beyond its competition from stuff like the BMW X5 and the Mercedes ML. Now, uh, they also had a low range transfer case, which is crucial when you're out in the dirt so you can multiply that torque and get a little bit of extra control. There were two different suspension setups in the Volkswagen. You can get them with steel springs or air suspension. If you got the air suspension, you could jack them up to about 11 inches of ground clearance, which is just insane considering that a Wrangler has something like 10.8 inches. Um, they are amazing off road. Pros and cons of the Volkswagen. Well, uh, find one with the locking rear diff. You do that by looking very carefully at the ad. Uh, there's a little knob to the left underneath the shifter. It should say high, low, center lock, and then try to find one with a little symbol at the six o'clock position. That was the rear diff lock. That's what you want to find. The air suspension was on the other side of that. It was this little twist knob. If you didn't get the air suspension, that's just like a little hole for change. Uh, cons, well, they are expensive to maintain, very expensive to maintain. Um, <laughs> I mean, they need brakes and tires constantly. It's a 15 year old German vehicle, so things are gonna break. Uh, it's also very unfuel efficient. Ours averages 13, 14 miles per gallon. And the aftermarket community is pretty small and the stuff that's out there is pretty expensive. It's actually quite expensive. Uh, there's a company now that's making a skid plate kit for this vehicle. I got super excited because yes, when we started the series, no one was doing skid plates and now there's someone doing it. Um, well, it was $3,500 powder coated and shipped. And for a vehicle that you can pick up between four and 5K, I just don't think I can justify that. But anyways, if you want the ultimate sleeper off-road, these are pretty cool. Check out the first generation Touareg built from 04 through 2010, there was a face up there in 2008, 2008. Number four on our list is the direct cousin to the Touareg, it's the Porsche Cayenne. Now these were co-developed, Volkswagen worked with Porsche to do this vehicle. They were a little different in terms of the engine department, but the platform is pretty much the same, so you can get the air suspension and the locking diffs. Uh, the Porsche, you can even get like rocker protection, so you can get some underbody protection, which you couldn't do on the, the Volkswagen. The Porsche is also, I think, remarkably ugly. That kind of looks like, I don't know, a boxster sucking a biscuit. It's got kind of this weird, crazy front end, but also super off-road worthy. Now, the, uh, <laughs> the Porsche is even harder to find one with the rear locker, and you gotta find one with the off-road group. What you can do is there's a website called Vin Analytics, not sponsored, but in VIN Analytics, you can plug in your VIN number and it'll spit out the option code that that car came from the factory with. And uh, there was one, I think it was called PT1, and that one had all the goodies. So that was like the locking rear diff and the, uh, the side protection, the rocker protection, and they're just they're so hard to find. It's, it was ridiculously expensive when new. Now the second generation of the Touareg and the Cayenne um, lost the low range transfer case, but you could still get like the, the Porsche with the rear locker. We had that exact model. Not quite as good off-road though, just didn't quite have the confidence of the first generations with the true low range, but it is an option if you want something potentially a little bit more reliable, a little bit more modern as well. There's also the Trans-Siberia model, which are the special edition version of the Cayenne that are super expensive now, um, but if you've got a big budget and you like orange, not a bad option. Okay, number three in the list. This is an interesting one. The Kia Sorento. All right. Sorento is a vehicle you're probably 
pretty familiar with seeing at schools, not one that you might see out on a trail, but the first generation and the first generation only was pretty rad. This was basically underneath a truck. So whereas the Volkswagen and the Porsche are unibody with independent suspension, the first generation Sorento was body on frame like you'd find on a pickup truck, which meant there was a body that was bolted onto a ladder frame with a solid rear axle, independent front suspension, but it had real skid plates underneath, recovery points, and a low range transfer case. And they can be had for like five grand, four grand. These things were awesome. They even had a limited slip rear differential. Uh, I love these kind of unexpected quirky oddball things. There's almost no aftermarket community on the Sorento, but in, 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 in a positive light, I guess, you could make your own. <laughs> but the Sorentos are really, really cool. V6 engine, not particularly fast, not particularly fuel efficient. Um, get the one with the part-time four-wheel drive. There was a full-time and a part-time. I've read that the part-time is better. So pros, very cheap, very reliable. It's affordable to fix it. When it breaks cons, it is ugly. The interior is mid-2000s Kia. So not exactly refined. Um, and of course, not much of a community around them, but I think if you want the crazy thing out on the trail, first gen Kia Sorento might be a winner. Number two on the list, the Mercedes GL. That's right, uh, the ultimate Mercedes family hauler. Leather everywhere, uh, you know, big V8. But if you got one with the off-road pro engineering package, they could be had in an amazing off-road configuration. Now, we're talking about like the first generation of the GL, I think it's X164, and then that kind of bled into the facelifted model as well, but uh, the enhanced off-road package on these was crazy. So low range transfer case, multiply that torque, that's crucial. Uh, Airmatic, air suspension, independent suspension, but I guess the off-road group ones had extra settings so you could get 11.8 inches of ground clearance, locking center differential, skid plates underneath, and I haven't been able to confirm this, but I believe a locking rear diff as well. The reason I haven't been able to confirm that they're so rare. They're even rarer than the, the locking rear diff, I think, on the Touareg and the Cayenne. These things are insanely rare. And once again, you wanna plug in the VIN um, into a website to find the different options uh, and make sure you get the right package. But so cool to think about this ultimate luxury family hauler could be had with a low range transfer case and skid plates that you could go take on the trail, like in Land Rover LR4. Pros, very cool, very rare, very good on and off-road. I've read cons, ridiculously unreliable, uh, expensive to maintain. Uh, the air suspension wasn't as good as the Volkswagen system, apparently. It just, it's, they were really, really problematic, and you will almost never see them. I've seen one in my entire life. Uh, actually, two. We had one as a press loaner once, and I found one after two hours of searching on a, some dealer in South Carolina. But th those were the only two I've ever seen. Uh, but if you can find one, I'd love you to send it to me because that would be a really fun video series to do. Uh, and yeah, you'll be the only one at the Easter Jeep Safari with a Mercedes GL. Now the number one car on our list, or should I say SUV? Or should I say truck? No, let's go with SUV is the second generation Ford Explorer. Now the new Ford Explorer is a great vehicle, but it's unibody independent suspension, great for towing boats, great for hauling your family, not so good for hauling ass off-road, but the second generation Ford Explorer I've had a little bit of experience with, let me explain, and it was like blowing my mind. So I've got a buddy named Chase Younggreen who had one of these. <laughs> and Chase would take this thing everywhere. I mean, it's like, it's not a great looking rig, the, the second gen Explorer, but this thing, I mean, he did a nice job with it and he just took it on some pretty gnarly terrain. We did this trail called Red Cone, which is a, a really pretty decently challenging trail and we were in these uh, souped up Land Rovers and here was Chase, this <laughs> Explorer bounding up and that's because they're affordable. So you can really beat the crud out of them and they just keep coming back for more, a couple thousand dollars all day long. Body on frame, uh, can be had with the low range, four wheel drive, very basic construction in the rear. You had leaf springs and a solid axle in the front. It was an independent sus suspension setup uh, with uh, uh, torsion bars. So not, not a huge amount of adjustability there in terms of lifting them, but really a, a really exciting four wheel drive rig. Um, very, like I said, durable. I mean, skid plates, he just bashed the heck out of this thing. And uh, he was able to modify it in a nice way as well. So it wasn't stock. It did have some pretty serious mods on it. But uh, if you can uh, find one in good condition, um, you can just have fun with it. You know, V8 engines, V6 engines, all pretty solid. The early Explorers had that weird twin I-beam system. The second gens were probably better in a lot of ways with their more traditional 
um, control arm, independent front suspension system. But yeah, I love them. They're, they're cheap as a pro. They're really durable. There's a big community around them if you need help, although pretty small aftermarket four wheel drive. Um, cons, I don't think they came with diff locks, although I'm sure that can be made uh, happen in the aftermarket. They're not really all that pretty in my opinion. Uh, not a huge amount of articulation, that kind of thing, but they're just, uh, if you're on a budget and you want to hit the trail with something unusual, second gen Ford Explorer, give it a whirl. Third gens had the independent rear suspension, first gens are rusted out and had that weird twin I-beam, but second gen I think is a sweet spot. I'm going with it. Well, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know what I've forgotten. As always, this has been Tommy with TFLoffroad.com. Check out TFL Offroad for the latest and greatest and new and quirky, unusual, weird off-road reviews.